Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to uh, today's special emergency council meeting. I'm Catherine McGarry, the mayor of Cambridge and chair of today's special meeting. So on behalf of council, we hope that everyone is staying safe, continuing to practice the physical distancing guidelines and that you're washing your hands regularly. Before we start our proceedings today, I would like to uh, start by pointing out that the first floor of City Hall opened yesterday to the public for customer service inquiries. And this really does mark another step forward in the city's recovery process. It's now been exactly three months since City Hall and our other facilities were closed to the public and that we canceled all of our recreation programs and events due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And I'm sure that everyone will join me in uh, acknowledging that it's far easier to shut down a building than to actually start re restarting all the, the buildings and the programs that we're doing. But at that time, we did activate our pandemic response team and, and our plan and seemingly overnight, we activated to a new virtual and essential workforce. We redeployed staff to maintain essential services and the changes began. Now we're starting to welcome back the public and the staff to City Hall and to slowly open our community amenities. We're using a staged approach and this is guided by the advice and the direction of public health officials our province of Ontario's three-phased approach to reopening businesses, services, and public spaces, and also the ongoing collaboration with the region of Waterloo and our area municipalities. The agenda package contains a report today with an overview of our economic response plan and how the city and partners have been supporting our local business community. I urge citizens to read the report fully. Please note that there's a summary of the many businesses that have stepped up to help during the pandemic by adapting their services and their products in creative ways. These are all good news stories and we are all very proud of the businesses and the individuals and the volunteers that have stepped up to assist in this uh, unprecedented time. So overall, over the past months, I believe that the city has acted and responded quickly to the evolution of the pandemic, working together with our regional and municipal partners, our businesses, community organizations, all of whom help to ensure that we're doing everything that we can to, to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Some of our key actions include expanding our bylaw enforcement team to ensure education and safety of all, working to keep connected with the community through our Rec From Home online program. We expanded our phone-based phone outreach supports for seniors and other online programs. We have implemented a cost containment plan for the city to help to manage costs and offset lost revenue. There's been ongoing support for our local business community through a dedicated web page, survey, outreach and order from home social media campaign. And these have been very successful and businesses have appreciated that everything is in one website for them to access. We've also introduced uh, recently an expedited process for local businesses to expand patios and outdoor space. And I hope to see our residents uh, physically distance but go out and support these uh, businesses. We've been working with partners to support the vulnerable population. We're also working with vendors to create a safe reopening plan for the Cambridge Farmers Market. So look for that on June 27th. We're also creating an archives project to document the pandemic experience from the Cambridge perspective. I'm incredibly proud of the, all the work that staff have accomplished, and I'm so pleased that we're moving forward. It was delightful to come into the building today and see that uh, there are a few of our, our staff that are already back in the building. And I know that we're all very happy to see the sun shining, the patios opening up, the hair salons opening up. Can tell that I haven't had an appointment yet. Um, but our city services are restarting and this is all good news. They're positive and hopeful signs. But we must remain vigilant and continue to be careful 
and particular for our frontline workers. And today, I'm really pleased that Patrick Gaskin, our CEO of Cambridge Memorial Hospital, is joining us today. Uh, I also see board chair uh, Ian Miles. Good to see you again too, Ian. And uh, on behalf of Council and City of Cambridge, I'd really like to thank Patrick and also Ian um, as board chair for the incredible, tremendous service that our hospital and the hospital staff have demonstrated during the pandemic. So let's get started on today's proceedings. We're very pleased again to be here with you today for another special meeting of council and another reminder that we're all in this together and we all need to continue to do our part. So I'm going to ask our clerk to complete a roll call of council so that we can confirm everyone's attendance today as we are coming to you electronically. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Councillor Adshade. Present. Councillor Devine. Present. Councillor Mehta. Present. Councillor Mann. Present. Councillor Reed. Present. Councillor Wolf. Present. Mayor McGarry. Present. Okay, we're all here. So in addition, we're gonna take a moment and recognize and welcome some of the staff we have joining us today. So joining us electronically, we have our city manager, David Calder, our deputy city managers, Cheryl Zonleiter, Hardy Bromberg, Dave Bush, our director of economic development, James Goodrum, our director of asset management, Yogesh Shaw, our chief planner, Elaine Brunshaw, our acting city manager, Sarah Austin, sorry, our acting city engineer, I've given you a new role already, our manager of, Rea, of Realty Services, Paul Kahn, our manager of Corporate Enterprises for Economic Development, Trevor McWilliams, our manager of Transportation, Shannon Noonan, and our Sustainable Transportation Coordinator, Lisa Shamiak, our Chief Financial Officer, Cheryl Ayers, our City Solicitor, Lisa Shields, and moderating and clerking the meeting today, we have our city clerk, Danielle Manton, and deputy clerk, James Hudson. So thanks again to our technology services staff who assisted in the logistics for today's meeting. Now we'll move forward for the land acknowledgement, the Indigenous Territory Acknowledgement. We would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather today is the land traditionally used by the Haudenosaunee, Ashinaabe, and Neutral people. We also acknowledge the endurance presence and deep traditional knowledge and philosophy of the Indigenous people with whom we share this land today. Now, as this is a virtual meeting, I'll ask that each member of council who wishes to speak praise the press the raise hand feature on your video call and the clerk and myself will track our speakers list today and, and I will invite you to speak. So we'll move on to declarations of pecuniary interest and a reminder to count members of council that if you've made declarations of pecuniary interest at a previous meeting, you'll also have to do so for the bylaw related to the same item. Members of council, are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Seeing none, we'll move ahead. Regarding delegations, as a result of city hall closures and social distancing guidelines being in place, in-person public attendance at special emergency meetings of council is not currently available. However, the procedures for electronic participation during the course of an emergency allow for the public to provide written submissions to the city clerk's office in advance of the meeting for items on the agenda and to also call in via telephone to our virtual meeting. This afternoon, we do have one registered delegation joining us virtually and we have three written delegations. Now we'll move forward to presentations and I know we're looking forward to this. As mentioned, we have one presentation this afternoon from the Cambridge Memorial Hospital President 
and CEO Patrick Gaskin, and also the chair of the board, Ian Miles, who are with us today to provide us with an update on behalf of the Cambridge Memorial Hospital Board. So welcome Patrick and Ian, and thank you both for being with us today. We'll have our clerk share her screen to present your uh, presentation. And following that, council may ask questions. I also understand that hospital board members are watching via YouTube channel this afternoon. So welcome to each of them as well. And thank you so much again on behalf of the community for what you've been doing for, for our community during this time. So there we have our presentation screen. And Patrick, are you taking over from here? Let's just get Danielle to go to the first slide if she could for that. And I'll ask uh, awesome if uh, Ian would say uh, a few words, first of all. Thank you very much. That's great. Welcome, Ian. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor McGarry. <laughs> Excuse me. And just please be, allow me to uh, share a short moment of my appreciation. You know, we've been doing these updates uh, since 2011, and certainly a lot has happened since then. Uh, however, what's what has not changed is the collaborative nature of our relationship and your willingness to to ask the tough questions and, and your unwavering support uh, that you've shown uh, to build a strong healthcare system within our community. And because of this, we are both uh, very grateful and honored to uh, have the opportunity to share our accomplishments from this past year and discuss uh, the opportunities and challenges that, that lie ahead over the next. So on behalf of the Hospital Board of Directors, I, I wanna thank uh, your worship, uh, Mayor McGarry and council for inviting us and allowing us the time to provide you and your constituents uh, this update. And with that, I'll, uh, I'll turn it over to Patrick to go through the presentation. Super, uh, thanks very much, Ian. Um, Danielle, are you able to do it in slideshow view or, or not for that? I know you, I saw you tried to click the button for that, but just I, I um, ah, fantastic, thank you. Um, and I'll take the next slide, uh, Danielle and I worked it out that I'll, uh, oh, <laughs> for that, uh, to queue through the slides, which would be fantastic. I just uh, want to uh, take the opportunity to, um, uh, go through some of the background and some of our accomplishments this year. I do have a few slides around COVID. I know it's top of mind with everyone. Uh, and when then we're obviously happy to answer any uh, questions uh, as, uh, as we uh, have done in year, years past. Um, so uh, your first slide, you obviously see the range of services we provide. By no means that's every uh, service within the organization, but pointing to uh, a couple of the stats this year, we topped uh, 500 in terms of our volunteers. Volunteers are a uh, key component to our organization and, and provide so much value added to our organization for that and really proud of the work they've done to, to top uh, 500. Um, and in terms of our uh, physicians and surgeons, uh, being able to, as the note said, uh, uh, add 20 new recruits, part of our expansion and our new services and being able to recruit new talent to the community is fantastic. I'll take the next slide, uh, Danielle, for it. Um, I'm going to uh, oh, we're go the other way, actually. <laughs> Perfect. I'm going to walk through some of the highlights. Uh, we'll go to the next slide, Danielle. It's fine. I'm going to go through some of the highlights for, for 1920. And I'll, some of them I'll speak about in more detail, but two of them that I won't, I'll touch on on this slide. For that in the bottom left corner, you see the, uh, the uh, notion, uh, the note made that we became a Ontario health team. Cambridge North Dumfries was successful in that in, in application to be one of the first cohorts of uh, uh, 30 Ontario health teams across Ontario. Um, really proud uh, of the work that we've done across Cambridge North Dumfries to be selected for as an early adopter for the new healthcare model, which will say much more integrated healthcare services for our community. Uh, Your Worship, you spoke at the evaluation, if you remember that, when they came around and they looked and uh, they evaluated, I think, the 80 applications they had across Ontario. So no doubt, part of your words and support and the letter you wrote on behalf of the, the work of uh, the partners, the 31 agencies that make up the Cambridge North Dumfries Ontario Health Team helped in that success. I'll speak more about that as the, in terms of the work uh, go on a go-forward basis. 
And in the bottom right hand corner, just to make a uh, note of that we were recipients of the, uh, well, I shouldn't say we, our uh, chair of our Patient Family Advisory Council, Corey Kimson, was recipient of the 2020 Patient Family Advisor Award from the Borrell Institute, an international organization recognizing patient experience and the important role that patients play, patients and, and uh, uh, patients play and caregivers play within the healthcare system. Um, Corey chairs our Patient Family Advisory Council has done a, a tremendous amount of work for us and it's nice to see her recognized uh, and uh, honored. Uh, Danielle, I'll take the next slide. I'll work, walk through just some of the highlights uh, around uh, the year for that. It's hard to summarize a whole year in a few slides for it, but I, I have to stress and celebrate proudly uh, our accomplishments in achieving uh, accreditation with exemplary standards standing. So in November, we were accredited at um, Eileen Gowdy, who's in the bottom right hand corner. She is part of a four person uh, accreditation team of external peers who come to us and assess our performance as an organization. And they're looking for quality, safety, patient experience standards. They look at 2,200 standards across our organization. They have 31 required organizational practices. Those are the top notch uh, practices that healthcare facilities need to have in place to ensure patient safety and quality. And we had all, this, all the uh, uh, organizational practices met. We had 99.6% um, uh, of the standards met and we received the highest level of accreditation. And, and you, uh, I'm so proud of an extended send back to you. We should be so proud of the uh, hospital in terms of the commitment to quality and safety and confidently uh, the team here across the organization wears this proudly in terms of the work that we did and to accomplish this and maintain this. On the next slide, uh, Daniel, I'll speak about uh, some of our kind of uh, highlights of some of the care that we have uh, offered throughout the year. Uh, we have introduced a uh, what's called the Cut the Count program. It's uh, a post-surgical opioid management program to help people both with uh, opioid use within the hospital and then post-care uh, discharge uh, opioid management in a, in a uh, successful way in order to reduce the availability of opioids outside of the hospital for it. So it's a, we're proud to be a members of this international program around uh, Cut the Count. We did our first ever double DEP. Uh, our, our plastic and reconstructive surgeons did that, uh, CMH first last year. We replaced our 16-year-old uh, nuclear medicine camera that was purchased in 2003 with a brand new state-of-the-art uh, nuclear medicine camera. Bought over a million dollars worth of, of, of pumps uh, for the organization as well as lots of other equipment. Um, we received from the Trillium Gift of Life a recognition that we exceeded uh, the expected expectation rate for um, organ donations for, for the community and for the province, which was a, a, an incredible honor to uh, be recognized and have the president here to give us that award. And we started uh, low complexity spinal surgery, which we had done a number of years ago, but we're able to recruit an individual, have the technology and the support to be able to offer that to our community. I'll take the next slide, Daniel, thanks. Um, uh, the board also approved a two-year strategic plan last year with three major areas of focus. First of all, focusing in on, the, on patients and designing care together, our commitment to, to working with our patients and advancing the care, kind of a focus on, our, on how we'll work with patients around designing the care that meets their needs. We uh, have a, a, a focus on joy at work and the notes there in terms of a, a similar or at the same time, we approved an employee engagement plan, which really focuses on improving joy at work. Uh, healthcare is a joyful experience, but healthcare can also be very stressful for it. And using the Institute for Healthcare Improvement Framework, which is uh, demonstrated in that circle on the right hand of your screen, uh, using the IHI's uh, framework for improving joy at work. We're uh, adopters of that framework. We have a two-year, three-year engagement plan with our staff council that is implementing and, and focusing on joy at work. The picture at the bottom right-hand corner is, a, is our uh, hospital-wide staff council wearing funny glasses for that. Uh, that's not the only thing we do to improve joy at work for that, but that's just a picture of our council. And our final initiative around in our two-year strategic plan is focused on leading and leading boldly as part of the Ontario Health Team work that we're doing. We say that we achieved because the first milestone was actually getting approval of the plan and we've done that. There's lots of work ahead. Uh, Danielle, I'll take the next slide. 
And I'd be, uh, can't go without saying that uh, many years I told you about when uh, Wing A would open for that. This year I can say, and you all know confidently that Wing A uh, opened and we were there to celebrate it uh, with staff, with the community. Uh, it was a, a wonderful opportunity and couldn't co come at a more timely, uh, a more timely way for us right now. Uh, moving on to the next uh, slide, Danielle, I'll, I'll spend a little bit of time on our COVID uh, response for it. I know it's top of mind for everyone. Uh, the next slide, I've got uh, four slides, but I won't go through each of, I'll, I'll only highlight one or two things on each of the slides in terms of what our work has been on the, our uh, COVID response. Um, I, I, we were in a perfect position to be able to add additional capacity. So looking at the second bullet there, we were able to add approximately 60 beds to our facility. And we were able to do that because in wing B, we have a number of empty beds uh, as a result of having a wing A for that. So we were able to do that um, and being able to respond to the community in a very timely way. Um, we opened up a uh, COVID-19 testing center. And right now we treat, uh, we test over hundred patients a day in our, in our testing center for that. And the final one is just under that I'll, I'll highlight is we were able to purchase new beds, ventilators, cardiac machines, and be able to mobilize very quickly on that. I'll speak a little bit more about, about that later. On the next slide, I'll talk about what we've done for our staff and our staff support. Our first, the first bullet there is we do a daily communication uh, to all of our uh, staff and been very transparent about our stock levels for that uh, within the organization. I believe, um, uh, council gets the, this daily communication as well that we've added you all to the this, uh, distribution list for it. I think we're up to communication number 70 uh, for our staff to keep, keep them informed. Moving down a few bullets, we provide education support, whether it's for the personal protective uh, equipment conservation strategy, um, but more importantly, I just want to reflect on the fact that we provide uh, have provided uh, intense education support for staff that were redeployed. We asked staff to become nurses, to become bedside nurses again, who hadn't done bedside nursing in a number of years, so that we redeploy them from one area in order to be able to respond to the needs of our community. Um, we redeployed staff to be cleaning staff, and again, uh, provided the education support for that. And down a few more bullets, uh, not only just education support, we were very committed to the wellness and re realizing there was anxiety and stress. Uh, and we provided and continue to provide uh, counseling, anxiety and support resources to, to our staff uh, to make sure that, they, that we treat the whole person and, maybe, uh, and support our staff through this journey. On the next slide, I'll speak a little bit about what our leaders have been up to over this. And our leaders have been working tirelessly across uh, the organization. We implemented our incident management system on February 1st. I had the pleasure back in October of watching David Calder and team run a uh, mock exercise at the city for that. So uh, today we had meeting number 93 of our command center. We've, we've, uh, we've had more meetings of that, but 93 meetings ago, we decided we better actually number them. Uh, because they were happening daily. Uh, we have pared back from seven days a week right now and do meet at the command center meet uh, five days a week now, but, but it has been all hands on deck as you can, can imagine. And we've had leaders present seven days a week, making sure they're addressing staff concerns, uh, personal protective equipment needs, anything that may be going on, uh, ensuring practice changes within the organization are, are well communicated. Our leaders have stepped forward as you would expect to support our community. On the next slide, I will speak about the community uh, response, which um, the first bullet uh, doesn't capture it uh, uh, well enough. The incredible support, I am in awe. I can't figure out the appropriate words to say whether it has been masks, foods, gloves, just kind words, uh, things that have arrived for us to be able to support. It's just been tremendous, the support that we have uh, received from the community. Um, and in turn, our support uh, to the community, whether it's been in the long-term care or the retirement home sector, where we've had uh, staff from this organization go out to be able to support them uh, as well. And the final bullet there around uh, a regular communication with our health and social service providers across Cambridge North Dumfries to in ensure the coordination and communication among our partners so that we're working as much as possible in lockstep and keeping each other informed. The next slide, um, I'll move on to talk about the work ahead and then I'll take the slide after that. And I will talk a little bit just about where we're going in 2021. So 
the first bullet is we're you know we are planning a gradual and started uh, ramping up uh, the our elective and scheduled surgeries uh, procedures in clinics uh, starting to do those not at the volumes we used to do but uh, doing them safely uh, and we've started a number of those this week and we'll start more of our service or so started last week and we'll start more of our services next week uh, the second bullet is um, in line with our expansion plans we have at the new building and plans to grow our services we um, we have program plan growth and so i say this as a measured expansion because I'm not sure, to be honest, what 2021 will look like in terms of our overall expansion beyond our regular capacity for that. But we have plans to continue to grow our services uh, to meet the needs of our community. And uh, we will do everything we can to have a measured uh, expansion of services in alignment with those growth plans. The work of the Cambridge North Dumfries Ontario Health Team will, will continue. Uh, we have a commitment to more integrated care, to using digital assets to improve digital health and health uh, services, uh, to look at the governance and management and how we organize our services uh, as, a, as a collective for that. So that work, uh, work will continue this year. And proudly, we will start the final phase of our capital uh, project expansion and that we are anticipating and working with Assurity and working with the lenders and in infrastructure Ontario by the fall of this year, we will have a new contractor in place and begin the final phase of the Wing V renovation that will take us to a complete project. On the next slide, I'd like to spend just a bit of time talking about the foundation uh, and the work that they do. And I'll go from that slide for Daniel, <laughs> but I'll go on to the next one actually and speak about the work of the, of the foundation. And, First of all, pause on the first bullet and recognize uh, our campaign, one of our campaign ambassadors, Frank Montero, um, and the impact that he had uh, for the support that he did for the hospital, for our community, obviously, for the work of the foundation, for it, uh, we remember and we, and we miss him. A few bullets down further on that list is to recognize the significant contribution from the Hallman Foundation of a million dollars to advance our liver health center of excellence, which is a fantastic uh, contribution that they have made in order to advance liver health for our community. And most recently, the Lazaridis Foundation, a commitment that we had uh, made early in February for COVID preparedness and $1.7 million allowed us to buy the ventilators the beds I mentioned earlier, the uh, cardiac machines, um, the fact that Lazaridis Foundation st um, uh, uh, stepped forward so so graciously, so generously, and so quickly to us was uh, was a help to us for sure. And the bottom bullet there, we have uh, pennies to go, fifty million dollar campaign, and only one point three six million uh, million to go. And with that, I will pass it back. Uh, next slide, uh, Danielle, and then the slide after that, and I'll pass it back to Ian for our closing words. Okay, thank you very much, Patrick. Uh, so before we turn it over for questions, I'd just like to once again thank uh, Council for the time that you've given us today. I mentioned before that uh, you know our relationship is one that we truly value. And uh, we're here, of course, to serve the, the needs of our community, and we look forward to continuing to expand uh, our programs so that we can continue to do our part to, uh, to drive a strong, vibrant, and healthy community. So with that, I will ask if there are any questions. Thank you so very much uh, for that presentation. And just before I move on to questions or comments uh, for Patrick or Ian, or Ian from members of council. Um, I think what you did neglect to, to say, Patrick, was the accreditation and what a high mark you got was while the hospital was still under renovation and that's really extraordinary. So we're very, very proud of that. So members of council, uh, please use your raise hand feature. I have a few here, so I'll just go in order. And Councillor Devine, you're up first. Thank you, Member Gary. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay, good. Uh, Patrick, I'd really like to thank you for the work you and your team have done and Ian as well. The, six years ago, you couldn't have imagined what you had to, would have had to go through to get that hospital up and running. Okay, and it's a credit to you, it's a credit to your team, uh, it's a credit, a credit to the entire organization. And I've, I've been in there a number of times and yes, the volunteers just do a wonderful, wonderful job and they're, they're, they're just great. So 
uh, for myself, I just want to thank you for the fine, fine job that's been done. Um, I, I'm surprised you have any hair left, Patrick, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, you, you've, just, you've just done a wonderful job. And it, it shows your, the, your leadership and Ian's leadership shows in the community and people have responded. So again, thank, thank you very much for what you've done. And I, I really don't have any questions, but uh, kudos, kudos to you. Kudos to you. Uh, thank you, Mike. It's, it's, a, it, uh, it's a team effort. Uh, there are, uh, I am one person with, uh, uh, who work uh, alongside 1,300 individuals and 300 physicians and 500 uh, volunteers, as you know, for that. So thank you uh, for it. We are absolutely here to serve the community. Um, I draw your attention to an obituary, a card of thanks in today's record. If you have time to, to peek at it, it's, it's, it references a, a patient we had here and it, it singles out two of our staff uh, by name, uh, our chaplain and our patient experience lead. And uh, just, you know, really speaks to the care, uh, the living the values within the organization that a family took the time to publish a, a card of thanks. Uh, to to this community, this hospital. Um, so thanks, thanks, Mike. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll move forward to Councillor Reed. Councillor Reed. If you could unmute, that would uh, that would help. Thank you. I know we have trouble remembering how to do that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. And uh, I just want to echo again what uh, uh, Councillor Devine has said, you know, that our hospital has been uh, something that we have appreciated for many, many years. And all of the trials and tribulations of going through the, the construction and you still kept up a, a good face and, and served our community. And through this COVID-19, you've been serving us very well as, as, as we have seen. I just have one question and that's about the testing center. I understand that at the testing center, it, is, it isn't accessible. And, and if people come who need accessibility for testing, do you send them someplace where uh, they can go and, and receive the test? Uh, thank you, Councillor Reed, for the question. And, and it is an important uh, point to mention that there is limitations because of uh, the requirement to have it as a separate access um, for it. And the way we had to set that up in sort of a temporary space and set it up quickly. Um, for that. So it is uh, a bit inconvenient. Um, so if people have mobility issues, there are other centers. We also have made accommodations to be able to, to uh, work with people we, uh, around how do we uh, ensure their access to it. Um, but uh, we are looking at, a, uh, at moving it to a new location. We're looking at, a, at, a, at trying to find a location within the community in terms of being able to move it off site so that it would be an area somewhere else. And obviously a key criteria for that is to find an accessible location for that so that um, ultimately it would be in a more accessible location. But right now there are limitations around the accessibility for sure. There are other testing uh, sites in uh, Waterloo region that, that uh, patients with severe mobility restrictions would, would need to go to and we would help facilitate that where we, are, where we can for sure. I appreciate that, and uh, I appreciate the fact that you're looking, uh, uh, you know, to uh, find find another place where it would be accessible to all of our uh, constituents. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll move ahead now to Councillor Wolf. Councillor Wolf, unmute, please. I'm sure it's great. We'd like to hear you. Thank you. Oh. Okay, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I uh, also want to uh, thank uh, you, Patrick, and your team. Um, my friends and neighbors go out every night at 7.30 and ring their bell. And everywhere I go in the city, people remark about what um, a wonderful job uh, our first line workers are doing. So uh, again, thank you. And uh, now all we have to do is convince our provincial government that nurses and other frontline workers deserve more than the 1% cap that we have. See what you can do about that. Another level of government, I think. Go yes, ahead, Patrick. 
<laughs> yes, I, I'll let others uh, uh, others address that <laughs> for sure. Thanks. Thank you. And we'll move forward now to uh, Councillor Mann. Councillor Mann. Thank you, Madam Chair, and through you, Patrick and the Ian, I just want to thank you too. And I think uh, Mike and Pam and Donna and, and the Mayor have said it very well. Uh, we sincerely appreciate all the time, effort and commitment that has been put into our hospital. We know that you took over at a very precarious time and, and that seems like such a long time ago. And if we think back to what you started with and what you finished with, or what you've accomplished today, you're not finished yet, I know that. <laughs> but, but what you had and what, you, what you've come up with is amazing. And uh, some very difficult times with difficult uh, uh, waters to navigate. And, uh, and the public perception is amazing. I hear comments from the public all the time about what a great hospital we finally have. And it did take a long time, but the longer you wait, the newer it becomes. And so at the end of the day, we have the newest facility. And like I say, the public perception is amazing. And they too are so very appreciative for the work that you have done with the team that you have put together. And uh, again, congratulations and thank you uh, for what you have done for our community and the confidence and trust that you build into our community through all that you've done. Thank you very much. Um, and the work ahead for Wing B uh, is a, a, you know, extensive renovations for the, at the end of the day, we'll have an incredible facility. We have an incredible Wing A right now. We've had the capacity of those empty beds to be able to add, uh, uh, add back some beds in service. Uh, at the end of the, the time period, we will have an incredible facility across both, uh, both wings for that. And, it, I, and I should pause and, and give a shout out to the city staff because uh, we've built it, but in terms of the support that we've had from the city has been without um, exception, fantastic support, timely response, a, a great team to work with um, because it takes, a, it takes a whole community to, to build the hospital and the city's been a great partner from the staff, uh, across the staff of various staff uh, departments to be able to support us for that. And more work ahead. Uh, the renovations will be tricky as anybody knows who's lived through renovation for that, take 150,000 square feet and live in it and renovate it at the same time. And for any of you that may have lived through a kitchen or a bathroom renovation, <laughs> yeah, multiply that by you know a hundredfold or a thousandfold because that's what we're about to live live through. Thank you. And I, I saw a few people raising their eyebrows at that. Uh, Councillor Ermetta, you're next. Councillor Ermetta. Thank you, Your Worship. I just want to echo a lot of the comments that were made. Um, Patrick, you and your team are amazing. Exceptional job. I look at how far the hospitals come. And I'm hearing a lot of feedback from people in the community who have also experienced the excellent care at the hospital. And they're really impressed with the new facility. So I just want to say kudos. Keep up the excellent work and looking forward to working with you. Thank you very much. And I think through all this, and I, and I mentioned this when we did our um, little one-on-one, -on -one, um, uh, Catherine, when we had the conversation for that, like, I, I think we should just pause to remember that at no time were our staff, uh, every step of the way through this whole pandemic, our staff have had everything they've needed in terms of the personal protective equipment. We've put no staff at risk for that. We've been able to secure through the work of our logistics, through partners, uh, through the community to make sure that we kept our staff safe so that they could keep our community safe for that and really proud of the work that we've done to be able to to do that and ensure the safety of our staff throughout this whole process. Thank you and I'd also like to give a shout out to yourself Patrick there was a, a few uh, scenarios where I had people uh, stepping up and saying, I need to test out this ventilator. I need to take test out this, this mask uh, sterilization unit. I need to test whatever. I need somebody to assist. And I would say that it's not just the businesses in our communities that have stepped up to provide some of the PPE and some of the equipment or retooled to actually uh, to make it. It's the fact that they had a willing host at Cambridge Memorial Hospital in order to help them get the specifications and to, and to try out whatever they were doing. And I can't help but give the Cambridge mask makers a shout out because when uh, I was doing an interview with them, I recognized that out of all of Ontario, it is one of the few and the first organizations to step up. And at last count a couple of weeks ago, I think before they switch to um, 
surgical caps, they were at 33,000 cloth masks, and many of whom have uh, arrived in your organization to keep people as safe as possible. So it's been an incredible partnership. I know uh, from my own uh, question, I know that you've talked about we're pennies away, if you can think of 1.3 million pennies or whatever it is at the moment, that should be our challenge today. But um, I know that we've talked about some of the ongoing needs as you're trying to fill the new wing with new equipment and upgraded equipment. So what is the ongoing needs that the foundation is looking for from the community in the next few years? Well, thanks for that question, Catherine, because uh, on an ongoing basis, uh, we will uh, post our, our campaign, look between four and five million dollars worth of needs each year. And, you know, you may say, and I probably said it to you in past years, you may say, well, well why? But, you know, that nuclear medicine uh, camera, uh, if it wasn't 1.5, it got, would be two million dollars. And we waited 16 years to replace it. But not everything gets replaced with the with the new wing. And so as we look to making sure we've got the best technology here uh, for our community, uh, it will cost us as a community uh, four to five million dollars a year um, on an ongoing basis post post campaign. And the, the foundation is aware of that. We've been working in partnership with them around how do you, you know, how do you remind and uh, convince and bring a community alongside uh, for that on an ongoing basis for that and so um, you know it is it is the work ahead for it to maintain the hospital and to continue to do what we want to do um, you know we'll need to replace that MRI it won't be that far away uh, that we'll need to you know say really we need to replace that MRI yeah it will be it will it will be old uh, for that and we'll need a several million dollars to be able to do that so it's an ongoing need it's in the four to five million dollars uh, range um, uh, Catherine for the next you know three, four, five, six years. We are we have an endless insatiable need for equipment in this organization. And it sounds like it, and it seems like only about three years ago that the MRI came in to begin with, but I know it's a lot longer than that. So thank you for those comments. And I just, and no one can answer this question, but I think we would reflect back on the hospital opening in January, which was such an incredible event that all of the community and in, indeed all of the, the residents in Waterloo region celebrated. But can you even imagine if we hadn't had this new wing open when the pandemic hit? We weren't even thinking about it then, but we knew that the new design with uh, individual rooms in emergency, for instance, some of the negative pressure rooms um, were already set to go, but it was just, uh, it was just in time. I, in a personal sense, uh, Patrick, I started in the hospital in 1999, and one of my first shifts in emergency, I remember hearing a surgeon uh, talking to a family uh, next to where I was uh, caring for a patient. And he said, ma'am, here in Cambridge Hospital, we look after our own. And I'd have to say, in saying thank you to you and Ian coming today, that indeed Cambridge Memorial Hospital, their staff, volunteers, physicians, and everyone there really does look after their own for us in Cambridge. So thank you so very much for joining us today. You're now welcome to uh, mute your microphones and, and stay while we continue with today's council meeting, but I know that you're both very busy, so we understand if you're unable to stay with us uh, today. So again, congratulations and thank you from a very grateful community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So now we'll uh, move ahead and uh, go to our consent agenda. And our first item for consideration this afternoon uh, is that consent agenda. If a member of council wishes to comment on any of the consent items, let us know again by raising your uh, the raise hand feature. And in the interest of time, we'll look to vote on the consent procedure in a block. But if you wish to comment, you are certainly welcome to. So Councillor Adshade, I think you're unmuted. So that's a good sign that you're ready to go with the motion. So uh, go ahead, Councillor Adshade. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, it's moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Devine, that all items listed under the heading of consent procedure for Tuesday, June 16th, 2020 Council agenda be adopted as recommended. 
And these include item number one, special emergency council minutes, June the 2nd, 2020. Number two, Parkwood Drive at Salisbury Avenue traffic control. Number three, Townline Road at Blackbridge Road traffic control. Number four, Langlaw Drive playground zone extension. Number five, uncommon intersection control review. And number 14, introduction and consideration of bylaws. Thank you very much. Now I note that uh, Councillor Devine has his hand raised. Uh, Councillor Devine, did you want to bring forward a comment? I just want to make a comment on the Sunny Hill Road and Harvey Street. Um, that, that's a good, that's a very, very good move. That's been problematic for years. And that's absolutely the right thing to do, for sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, seeing no further comments, I'm going to, uh, yeah, last call. All right, I will uh, ask our, uh, our clerk to call for the vote. Madam Clerk. Thank you. Councillor Adshade. In favor. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Meta. In favor. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. In favor. And that carries. Thank you very much. Now we'll uh, move forward to the next item, which is number six on our agenda, the Cowan Boulevard Playground Zone and Speed Limit. We do have one registered delegate on this item today. So I'll ask that we're patient as we make the arrangements for the delegate to join our meeting. Once the delegate joins our meeting, they'll have five minutes to speak to their item. And as everybody is aware, our rules do not permit in-person delegations at this time, but will permit electronic submissions received in advance of the meeting as well. Delegates may also call into our meetings to speak to items. So as I mentioned that we have uh, one delegation joining us today on our next item, Alexander uh, Tanas has registered to speak to the Cowan Boulevard playground zone and speed limit, hoping that I got your name correct. Uh, we're going to contact Alexander to see if uh, he can access our meeting and invite him to speak. So uh, just a couple of minutes here until I get the high sign from Madam Clerk. Okay, Alex, uh, Alexandru, do you hear us? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Great, it's Mayor McGarry. Um, I'm sure that you know you've been well briefed that you've got uh, five minutes to speak to the item. So welcome today yeah. and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me over, uh, over the phone. Um, I'm sure, I'm like, I don't know if you already um, read my, uh, my notes regarding this, um, proposal, but I am 150% for voting um, in favor to lowering the speed. I, if possible, to 30 at speed bumps to the street because uh, there are some drivers that are simply ignoring the, the law. And I would assume mostly, mostly um, teenagers that drive in, uh, in irresponsible. And this is something that I cannot accept. I don't have kids yet. I have nieces. I have neighbors with kids. Kids play on the street. Um, I have three doggies. And my neighbor has, has dogs, has cats. So if there's a pet that, I don't know, goes un, unsupervised and crosses the street, um, there's a kid that goes unsupervised and crosses the street or doesn't know how to cross the street, they will not stand a chance. And... Um, the buses, I know it's a bus route, and the buses are following the speed. Um, I would say 50% of people that drive on the streets follow the speed, but the other 50, 
they do not. And it's crazy how fast they drive. I get rage and you can't do anything because they're, they pass by you in, in a blink. And this, this has been going on for four years since I moved here. And it, it just, you can't control it. And I, I would appreciate if the city decides to, um, to enforce the, the speed. And I don't know if it's allowed to place the speed bombs on a bus route, but uh, just something to deter these drivers to fly from stop sign to stop sign. And that's pretty much what I have to say. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm all for it. I don't know if you got a lot of members from um, a lot of uh, neighbors uh, of uh, of ours from Cowan Boulevard, but uh, definitely with the new playground and um, just the the number of of drivers that drive fast is is insane. Okay, thank you very much, Alexandra. Are you finished your comments? Yes. Okay, I uh, meant to say as you started, please uh, stay on the line. I'm going to ask for questions or comments from members of council and then invite you to to answer those. And for then sure. uh, once we're ready to move forward with the item, you can stay on the phone um, mm -hmm. so that while we discuss the item, you can hear some of the comments. Our staff will meet with, at that time so you can hear the outcome of council's decision. But once I close off the question and answer period with you, you'll no longer be allowed to comment, but you will get to hear uh, how council votes on the issue. So we'll remove okay. you once uh, from the meeting once the council's decision has been voted upon. So thanks again for coming to speak. Now I do see um, uh, Councillor Ermeta would like to speak. So I'm gonna hand it over to Councillor Ermeta. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Just a quick comment. I just wanna thank him for coming in. And um, it is consistent with what I've been hearing in the neighborhood that the speeding has been an issue. And I just wanted to know that I've been hearing that and just to thank him for coming in. Thank you. Are there any other uh, questions or comments from members of council? Seeing none, I think uh, Alexandra, I might just, uh, it's uh, Mayor McGarry. I just wanted to, uh, to ask if you'd had some of the um, some of the discussion with your neighbors uh, before you came in to speak today. Uh, yes, I have spoken to two of my neighbors, um, and they all feel the same. Um, I didn't go down the street because during these times, I'm sure nobody wants to like hang out or talk um, or open the door to who knows who is you know ringing their doorbell. But I um, I spoke directly to the neighbor across the street from me who had has pets and the neighbor close to me like the next next house and they have kids there four kids and they are in the same boat um pretty much we're we're you know not able to protect our kids pets our community against these drivers and they I believe last summer the city uh, placed uh, an electronic board, like a speed board, uh, for people to see. And I don't think a lot of drivers noted, noticed it. It was pretty high up. But every time I would look at it, it was like people drive this on this street, like a, um, it's like a 70 plus uh, kilometers an hour um, average speed. It's downhill, or if they go uphill, also they, they, they speed, but there's not, there's, there's nothing to protect us, people that live on this street against these drivers. And yeah, it's sad because I don't want to experience or to be to witness an, an accident, an unfortunate accident for uh, the city to do something about it and enforce this speed, speed limit. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. And it's certainly consistent what, uh, from what I've heard from some of the residents in that area as well. So thank you again for uh, staying with us today. So I'm going to hand over and ask members of council if there's any questions of staff. No, I don't uh, see any there. So uh, 
Again, Alexandra, we thank you for your participation today in our meeting and for your delegation. The meeting is live streamed, uh, so you're welcome again to watch the remainder of our meeting on the City of Cambridge YouTube channel if you'd like. But I'm going to move forward now and ask uh, Councillor Ermetta to put the motion on the table. Councillor Ermetta. Thank you, Your Worship. Item 6, Cowan Boulevard, Playground Zone and Speed Limit. This motion is to be moved by myself. Since Councillor Liggett is not here, I will need um, a seconder because Councillor Liggett is not here. Councillor Mann. Councillor Mann. Okay. Man. okay. Thank you. The recommendation is that report 20 045 CD regarding Cowan Boulevard playground zone and speed limit be received. That report, or sorry, that a playground zone with a 40 kilometer an hour speed limit be implemented in front of Duncan Ferguson Homestead and that of the 40 kilometer speed limit be extended north to Robson Avenue and South Avenue Road and further that traffic and parking bylaw 187-0 schedule 18 rates of speed be amended to include a 40 kilometer an hour speed limit on Cowan Boulevard from Robson Avenue to Avenue Road. And just a few comments, please. Thank you, Your Worship. Go ahead. Um, I just I just want to thank staff for this excellent report. I agree with it fully. It's been a concern for a while, like the speeding, and I just want to thank um, staff for responding as quickly as they did. And um, it's got, you know, it's got the full support of the neighborhood. I just want council to know that. I know I've heard from residents who would like to look at things like speed bumps, which I would, you know, want to consider in the future. But at this time, I think this is a very good start. And I think that this will go a long way to improving the situation. And certainly a lower speed does give us the ability to try to enforce it. So um, I just wanted to let council know it's got my full support and I would appreciate your support also. Thank you, Councillor Ermetta. Um, and members of council, are there any uh, sort of last call for questions for, for staff at this particular time or uh, any questions of staff? Seeing none, does council have any comments? Seeing none, I'll now ask for our clerk to call for the vote. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Councillor Achade. In favor. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Mehta. In favor. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. In favor. And that carries. Uh, thank you. All right, so we'll move forward now to our next item, which is item number seven, Michigan Avenue Park Playground Zone and Speed Limit. And Councillor Reed, you have the motion. Please read the motion in its entirety. Councillor Reed, you're now muted. You. You actually muted. Oh. Yep, that's okay. Go ahead. Okay. It's moved by myself and it is seconded by Councillor Devine. The recommendation reads that report 20 114 CD regarding the Michigan Avenue Park Playground Zone and speed limit be received and that a playground zone and 40 kilometers uh, speed limit be implemented on Michigan Avenue from Chase Crescent to 65 meters north of Abbott Crescent slash Collin Circle, and that a playground zone and 40 kilometer speed limit be implemented on Abbott Crescent from Michigan Avenue to 100 meters westerly. And that a playground zone and 40 kilometer speed limit be implemented on Chase Crescent from Michigan Avenue to Thatcher Street. And further, that traffic and parking bylaw 187-06 schedule 18 rates of speeds be amended accordingly. Uh, could I speak? 
speak yes. to that motion? Yes, you may. I'm very much in favor of the motion. It, uh, it is an area in Ward 1 that uh, many of the residents have spoken to me about. And uh, I know that around our playgrounds, we're very nervous. And we, we certainly want to try and get the speed limits uh, down. One thing I, I'm wondering, and maybe staff can um, respond to it. Uh, this is the second one today that we're going for 40 uh, kilometer speed limit and I'm wondering if there, you have any feedback from the community or from anywhere else about whether the going to the 40 kilometers actually works. Do people actually reduce their speed? Um, you know, and I'd be very interested in knowing uh, around the city if the 40 kilometers actually bring speeders down. We know that we have a problem with speeders and uh, and if this works, it would be really, really advantageous to us. So I'm wondering if staff could respond to that. Thank you. And I see that uh, Shannon's come on stream. Is it yourself that would speak to that, Shannon? Uh, yes, Your Worship. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Uh, through your worship, um, typically with 40 kilometer per hour speed limits or any reduced speed limit, um, it is difficult to um, address or to change driver behavior. But usually when we implement a 40 kilometer per hour speed limit, it is in relation to a school zone or a park zone, or you know, there's some reason why we're implementing it. And in those areas, we do find that, um, you know, drivers will reduce their speeds because they can relate to something that's in the area like a school or a park. Where we arbitrarily drop speed limits or reduce speed limits um, for you know, no, uh, no reason um, other than you know, we think it's going to uh, change driver behavior. In a lot of those cases, we don't typically find that it is successful in reducing vehicle speeds. Thank you. Okay, are there any um, any questions for staff? Yes, I see Councillor Mann. Councillor Mann? Thank you, Madam Chair. And I think uh, Shannon probably knew I was gonna ask a question and she already gave the answer. But as I was reading this the other day, I thought uh, when we, you know, you look at Eagle Street, you look at Bishop Street, you look at Franklin Boulevard, you look at Ainsley, you look at water, you look at all the streets around our community. And some of the major arteries that we have are, are posted 50 kilometer zones. And then you go into our residential areas where we have, especially now we have lots more people walking, we have more cyclists, we have uh, kids out playing, and we still have 50 kilometer zones where the streets are much narrower, there are sidewalks and people are much closer to the road. And yet on those main arteries that we have throughout the city, it's 50 kilometers an hour. And on those residential areas where we wanna be a little more careful and concerned about our, our citizens, it's 50 kilometers an hour as well. And when I was reading this, I thought, I wonder if we should take a look at across the, the uh, residential neighborhoods in our community and see if we need to reduce the speed limit from 50 to 40. And I know the argument there is if you really want to reduce it and have an impact, you're supposed to reduce it to 30. But I'm going to say 40. But I also think that it's, I wonder if that's something that we need to look at and say, are we wiser to make make uh, a blanket statement about 40 versus uh, pockets of 40 and 50 throughout the city. So I just wanted to throw that out there and see what uh, response I can get from staff and if it's worth taking a look at to see if we can come back with an idea of what could be done to help keep the citizens in our communities because every, every ward councillor gets a complaint about speeding and we all try to come up with ideas on how to control it. Is there something that we need to do across the board as a city? Thank you. Would a uh, member of staff like to address that? And I, I will uh, just remind everybody that uh, one of the outcomes out of their public town halls over the last year uh, indicated that one of the number one complaints in our city was about uh, traffic safety. So I know we've sort of started this kind of discussion. Is there a member of staff that could just take this question at the moment? Uh, Mr. Brongberg. Yeah, I'll just I'll just refer that over to Shannon Noonan, our transportation manager. Thank you. Go ahead, Shannon. Uh, through your worship, 
uh, there, it is um, possible to, certainly possible to have a look at those various options that you've talked of. Um, it would uh, require um, a fairly extensive review. It has been done by some other municipalities. Um, from what, just anecdotally, what I've heard is um, in some of these other municipalities where they have done some pilot projects with uh, 40 kilometer per hour speed limits in a residential neighborhood, they haven't necessarily found the results that they were hoping to have uh, with reduced speeds. Um, however, um, as I said, it's certainly something that staff could look at um, if we were asked to do so. Um, but just uh, one um, item I guess I'd like to point out is that um, if we were to, to look at that, I would suggest looking at it um, from a pilot project perspective, maybe picking one um, area of the city, uh, because there is a fairly significant cost to that type of a change of a blanket uh, change, because we would have to, to uh, install a fair bit of signage and change a, a, a fair bit of signage. So um, that would be my suggestion, but it's certainly something that staff could review if, if directed to. Councillor Mann. Thank you, Madam Chair. And, and uh, I would love to, to have staff do that. And I would certainly offer up uh, the south side of King Street in Preston, that residential neighborhood because of the number of complaints there. And I realize we have a lot on our plate and, I, and I'm not looking for something tomorrow, but certainly something down the road that we could look at and, and utilize as a pilot project and say, um, is there any benefit to doing it? And if we do the pilot project and you say, no, there isn't, then, then at least we've done it and we can take that back to the community. But if we come back with something that says, you know, there are ways in which we can do this, do this and make it effective, then maybe it's something that we could implement in, in different areas in the community. But it, I, I would love to provide that uh, or request that direction and then uh, see if uh, the south side of King Street would be an appropriate area to do it that in that residential area. So you are providing uh, some direction to staff to really take a look at that. Um, would you be uh, willing to consider that uh, staff could sort of assist with looking at an area to uh, to sort of give us the best pilot project uh, possible, depending on the area, uh, if they take a closer look at this? Like, Absolutely. would you be flexible on that part? Absolutely, Your Worship, and, and, it, and it may be that they come, staff come back and say, we have all kinds of different ideas about how we can control traffic, and just reducing it to 40 kilometers an hour is not the answer. Here are the answers, and I, and I think those are the things we would really like to hear, and, and I know staff have all kinds of great ideas. Sometimes we get caught in the rut where we see reduce the speed limit or increase stop signs or do these things, and, and, and we have that narrower view, and staff have got all kinds of ideas because of their uh, relationships with our other municipalities and uh, uh, those kinds of things. So I'd be glad to hear what they come back with. Okay, I think um, I just need nods from uh, members of council for staff to take this as direction. Is that? Yep. I think that's a, a broad, broad support. So we'll take that direction um, for staff. And then we'll return to the motion at hand that Councillor Reed and uh, Councillor Devine brought forward. So um, I do see another another hand up. Councillor Reed, did you want to speak to this again? Uh, no, I'm fine with that. Sorry about that. Okay, has been done before. We've I did it myself today. Forgot to bring my hand down. I see no other comments or uh, questions for staff. Any any further comments? Uh, Councillor Adshay, did you have a comment? No? no. No. Okay. All right. So I will now move forward to the vote and ask our clerk to call for the vote. Madam Clerk. Councillor Adshay. Uh, in favor. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Mehta. In favor. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. Aye. And that carries. Great. Thank you very much. Now we'll move uh, forward to item number eight. And this is the transit oriented development community improvement plan process. So 
Councillor Wolf, you have that motion. Will you please read it in its entirety? Uh, yes, through you, Madam Mayor, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Mann, recommendation that Council Report 20-096 CD regarding the process for implementing a community improvement plan for transit oriented development be received and that council pass the attached bylaw designating the identified area as a community improvement project area and that city staff prepare a draft community improvement plan for public consultation and input and further and further that city staff prepare a future report to council about the recommended community improvement plan and public input received. And speaking to the motion. Go ahead. Uh, I strongly support the motion. Uh, we're looking at the uh, central transit corridor, basically where the ION would, would go uh, in the short future, I hope, uh, as uh, where we'd be implementing this plan. And uh, the purpose of it is to encourage walking, cycling and transit and uh, you know, lower dependence on the car, uh, all of which are good things. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Reed, I see that you'd like to speak as well. And at I, this I, time, I'll also call if there's any questions for staff, but go ahead, Councillor Reed. Uh, yes, I have a question actually for staff because in the report it talks about uh, public consultations and uh, and I'm just wondering how, uh, just how we're going to do those public consultations and uh, during this time of COVID-19 uh, and uh, if we're going to do them with physical distancing or we're going to do them virtually or just how we might be able to handle that and, and have some assurance that the public has had a, a, a real opportunity to have their say. Thank you. And I think those processes are being developed. Who would like to speak to that? It's uh, Mr. Bromberg. So I'll, I'll just ask Lisa if she could respond to the process around the public engagement. That would be great. Through your worship, um, we're still in, we're still developing what the process would look like, but we are looking at um, a lot of municipalities have been doing uh, some virtual engagement, doing things online, having surveys, um, allowing the public feedback. Um, sorry, allowing the public to ask questions and still being able to respond um, and posting the questions online. So they're still um, trying to figure out uh, what the best method would be, but there is there does seem to be some virtual options that have been um, proven to be um, successful that we're hoping to, to go with. Thank you. Is that it then, Councillor Reed? Good. And are there any other questions of staff or comments that council would like to make? Seeing none, then uh, I'll now ask at this time for our clerk to call for the vote. Madam Clerk. Thank you. Councillor Adshate. In favor. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Mehta. Aye. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. Aye. And that carries. Thank you very much. Now, uh, Council will move to our next item, which is number nine, Gatehouse Drive Council Motion 19-211. And Councillor Adshade, you have this motion. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, it's moved by myself and second by Councillor Meta. The recommendation that report 20-095 CD regarding Gatehouse Drive Council Motion 19-211 be received and that larger no stopping anywhere signs along the school frontage be installed. Thank you very much. All right, are there any questions for staff at this time for members of council? I don't see any, so we'll move forward. Are there any uh, comments for from Council? 
And seeing none, I am going to just make a couple. I went past this, uh, this area several times in the last couple of weeks, and I have noted that those, uh, those no stopping signs are, are pretty well hidden. I know that we've heard a lot from this particular community to, to uh, move forward and see uh, what we can do in this area in order to try and prevent some of the, uh, the issues they've had during school hours in particular, when uh, parents will, will stop illegally and let their kids out. So I'm uh, certainly in favor of this particular motion. All right, seeing no other comments, I'll ask for our clerk to call for the vote. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Councillor Adshade. In favor. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Mehta. In favor. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. Aye. And that carries. That's great. We'll move forward now to item number 10, which is uh, Cambridge and RTO4 Grand River Project, Water Street South. So, Councillor Liggett, I believe that you have the motion. So Councillor Liggett. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Yep, just one second. I'm out I can, of sync. I can take that if you like. No, I've got uh, Councillor Adshade to take that one. Item number 10. Councillor Adshade, go ahead. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Your Worship. It's uh, moved by myself and seconded by uh, Councillor Mann. Recommendation that report 20-084 CRE regarding Cambridge RT04 Grand River Project Water Street South be received. And that funding in the amount of $25,000 be transferred from the Economic Development Reserve Fund to fulfill the City of Cambridge financial requirements of Project A-01025-40. And further, that Council authorize the Mayor and Clerk to execute all applicable agreements to allow full and beneficial collaboration between all relevant parties, the City, the Region, and the Grand River Conservation Authority for completion of said project to the satisfaction of the City Solicitor. Thank you very much. Are there any uh, questions for staff? Councillor Devine. Yeah, so thank you, and through the chair. Um, and just, just a question. Is this going, is the, is this going to be accessible for person, people or persons with challenges? Is this uh, going to be accessible? Is that the plan? I have a question to staff. Um, through the mayor, yes, that is our intention um, as we, uh, work through the design process. We'll be uh, looping in Vanessa Lopak, our uh, inclusion uh, supervisor. So um, that is the intention for sure. You might, you might want to take it to the AODA committee and to do a presentation as well, because they'll be, they'll be very concerned about that, uh, uh, Mr. Goodrum, and, and thank you for your response. Okay, now I'm unmuted. Uh, thank you very much. Are there any further questions from council to staff? Seeing none, are there any uh, comments from council? And seeing none, I would like to just comment myself that I'm absolutely delighted to see this project go with, going forward. I've met with uh, uh, RTO4, our regional tourism office, uh, uh, David Peacock, several times over this issue in the last few years. And I think that this will be timely. It will help provide some needed uh, recreational access, which is uh, much improved from what's there already uh, for this particular river access. And I know that there's been good collaboration between our, our city staff at uh, Cambridge here, as well as the RTO4. And I know that there is is certainly uh, some real benefit that we can see. And the last thing I really want to say is uh, as we are reopening our province and we look at some of the harder hit sectors from the shutdown of our uh, economy because of COVID-19, that the tourism, um, the tourism industry provides a huge benefit to our um, 
our economy in the province of Ontario. And again, it's something that since we are blessed with a river running through our city, that we have a lot of advantages that we can capitalize on, provide good recreational opportunities to our, our residents and also those that are visiting Cambridge. So I'm delighted to see this move forward. So for now, I will now ask our clerk to call for the vote, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Councillor Adshade. In favor. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Mehta. In favor. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. Aye. And that carries. Okay, thank you. So our next item is item number 11, the old post office snow guards and Councillor Wolf, I see you're at the ready. So you've got the motion, please read it in its entirety. Uh, thank you, through you Madam Mayor, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Reed, recommendation that a new capital project A-00102-42, old post office snow guards be approved with a budget of $85,000 funded from the Facilities Reserve Fund, and that the old post office snow guards be awarded to roof tile management for a total cost of $82,490, including HST, this being a sole source arrangement as permitted under procurement bylaw 19-187. And further that snow guard purchase and installation be completed as recommended by Heritage Planner to the Municipal Heritage Advisory Committee. I'm speaking to the motion. Go ahead. Uh, in 2019, uh, freezing rain and ice weather events resulted in snow and ice piling up on the upper and lower roofs and then sliding off. Uh, fortunately, no one was hurt, but we do not want this to happen again. So following consultations with our heritage architect for the project, and the heritage contractor, it was determined that a snow guard is required for the heritage roof. And the company that we chose to do this is the person who put the slate roof on and they will uh, be putting a stainless steel snow guard that complements the heritage building and it'll be fabricated installed as part of this project. So hopefully we'll be much safer this winter. Thank, Thank you. you very much. All right, moving forward, are there any uh, questions for staff? Uh, Councillor Devine, I see your hand raised. Councillor Devine. Yes, and through the chair. Uh, I think this is, this is critical that we have this done. This is a huge, huge safety issue. And the sooner we can get it done, the better. Uh, clearly it has to be done before the winter. So I'm fully, fully supportive of this. Uh, we don't want any of our residents to get hurt or any staff to get hurt. This is it's critical, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Devine. Are there any further questions for staff? Seeing none, does uh, council have any comment? Seeing none, we're ready for the vote. So I'll ask uh, the clerk to call for the vote. Madam Clerk. Councillor Adshade. In favor. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Mehta. Aye. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Rolf. In favor? Councillor McGarry, I'm sorry, Mayor McGarry. Aye. That carries. Okay, our next item is number 12, our Cambridge Economic Response Plan. And uh, I understand uh, that Cheryl Zonleiter and James Goodrum both have some introductory remarks related to the item. So uh, Cheryl, I see you've unmuted, so go ahead. Thank you. Uh, good evening and through your worship uh, and to members of council. You may recall that on March 25th of this year, staff brought a report related to the financial implications associated uh, with COVID-19. And at this earlier stage in the pandemic, the city through this report committed that its economic response to the situation would be guided by five pillars. Those were to communicate and inform, to offer continued business services, facilitate land development, continue working and find new partnerships, as well as offering financial relief. 
Since that time of that report in March, the city has introduced some initiatives and measures that align with these pillars, with our goal to continuously providing an economic response in this rapidly changing environment. The purpose of the report before you today is to provide council and the public with a comprehensive update of these activities. And so at this time, I'm just going to turn it over to James Goodrum, our uh, Director of Economic Development for the city, to highlight some of those activities for you. Okay, hey, thank ahead, you. James. Thanks oh, for joining th us. Oh, thank you. Um, so the goal of the plan has always been to minimize the loss of business jobs um, and to keep the land and building development industry going as well. So as the businesses are going to be transitioning through reopening and recovery phases, we have and we will continue, and, and this is right across the corporation because it's uh, many hands in the in the pie here to make these things work out. So, um, so we're going to continue to support the business community um, with information that they need for safe operation, and it's really with a goal to, you know, ensure the you know an effective recovery as best we can, and uh, to make sure we end up with a, a strong economy as we can. And one of the other things I wanted to point out um, before I hit some highlights here of uh, some staff initiatives is that uh, similar to other departments across the city, we are working with our region partners. Um, so right now we have um, what's called Best WR, Business and Economic Support Team, Waterloo Region. We have a number of meetings weekly. And um, so we're gonna continue to participate in, in these cooperative initiatives with the region. And one of the things that we're, we're looking at working on now, and we've started with our partners, is a, somewhat of a recovery framework that's going to include short, medium, and long-term strategies um, to move forward and help ensure some economic stability and recovery. So some of the initiatives that uh, Cambridge staff has worked on, obviously, um, our CFO Cheryl Ayers has, uh, I think it's been two reports now that has been brought forward to council for consideration around financial relief. And that's the waiving of penalties and interest on property taxes uh, till the end of June, uh, you know, and uh, most recently the development of a property tax deferral program. Uh, one of the things that we, we noted early on is to have a dedicated place where businesses could go and residents could go for information. So. Uh, staff created a dedicated web page to the COVID-19 pandemic and it lists federal, provincial, and municipal programs that are available to City of Cambridge business and residents, as well as important links to programs and services uh, that are promoting and supporting business. We've continued on with our economic development services, which includes business consultations, business assistance, as well as facilitating uh, development. And I, I'm happy to say, you know, we have and continue to have interest in development of uh, employment lands. Uh, we've had some clients that we've been working with and our engineering folks um, are continuing on with, as you know, the, the capital projects to open up shovel ready lands in the North Cambridge Business Park. One of our other initiatives is uh, we're doing a business outreach survey and that is really going to help us as staff develop actions uh, that we need to do locally or that we could do locally, as well as areas that you, our mayor and council can advocate with upper, upper levels of government on, on behalf of our local businesses. One of the most enjoyable things we did was the order from home program which includes uh, Dine From Home as well as Shop From Home campaigns. Um, and they've been very well received. We've had thousands of hits on those web pages. So that's really, you know, that was really a team effort that involved GIS, communications, uh, my own staff, as well as others in, uh, in licensing and that. So that was a really good, uh, successful project as part of this pandemic. And I, I Mayor McGarry mentioned this early, as recently as last week, city staff created a streamlined patio expansion application process so that we can assist sorry james we don't seem to hear you can you try again there i'm just going to see if james can uh either come back in or be able to continue his comments. We'll just pause for a moment.
Cheryl, it looks like we've lost James for the moment, unless you've got up to date information there on him. Oh, sorry, I just froze oh. up. <laughs> froze uh, there up you and go. Was, and I was Welcome disconnected, back. so I when I went I when I finished speaking, I went back to the screen, and everybody was frozen in place. So something we had a technical error here. Everything was fine up until my presentation, which is how <laughs> it works, right? It does. We just uh, sort of talked about the order from home and and all the other uh, pieces. Are you completed in your uh, presentation then? Uh, yes, I am. Just, uh, I, did you hear about the patio component that staff worked just on last start. week? Oh, okay. So yeah, anyways, go ahead and complete we have one. a, yeah, we have a streamlined patio uh, process through with our engineering folks and uh, parks and rec. So that's something that we worked on last week and that will really help businesses uh, maximize their capacity of patrons on their patios while still practicing, you know, physical distancing and the other health protocols. Thank you very much. All right, we'll move forward and just put the motion on the floor before we move uh, forward to uh, questions and comments. And Councillor Mann, you're set there and you've got the motion, please read it in its entirety. I have, Madam Chair, thank you. And through you, it's moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Donna Reed, that report 20 146 CRE, Cambridge Economic Response Plan, be received. And that report 20 146 be referred to the Cambridge Economic Development Advisory Committee for information. And just speaking to the motion. Go ahead. I just want to commend staff because, uh, you know, people have come forward as soon as the news came out that business was going to reopen and businesses got in touch with us and said, how are we going to do that? And, and uh, staff were available with all the answers and the streamlining, streamlining of the uh, patio licenses was, was uh, pivotal for a lot of businesses because they wanted to get it out and they wanted to get open right away. And James, you're right, the, the patio licensing was great and the process and the communications and working with everybody really helped to streamline that process and make it an easy process for people. So thank you for all of that and for all of the work that you have done and your team has done and in, in trying to get businesses up and running as smoothly and as quickly as possible. It's been noticed and it really has been appreciated. Thank you very much. I have a few hands here. Um, Councillor Devine, you're next. Councillor Devine. Yes, it's through the chair. Thank you very much. Um, I would really like to extend a, a congratulations to all city staff, the economic development, the legal department, bylaws, it could go on and on and on. With last week on Monday or Tuesday, it was announced that patios could be open. And from what I can see, I talked to city staff on Tuesday or Wednesday. City staff literally moved heaven and earth to get all the legal, all the legal written, um, all the bylaws, what they could do, what they couldn't do. Got back to the the uh, uh, restaurant owners and uh, uh, bar owners and pubs very very quickly. And to be quite honest with you, I I was amazed, absolutely amazed on what had been put, put together by city staff over a 48 hour period, because on Tuesday there was virtually nothing done. So, and all those people that worked on it, it's not just the city managers, it's the technical people, uh, and those people all know who they are. And I just wanna thank them for what they've done and economic development led the charge and that's, that's great because a lot, of these, a lot of these places have been suffering uh, severely, severely. And this is gonna, it might, in a lot of cases, to be quite honest with you, it, it will likely save their business and those businesses will be around. So I, I want to thank city staff for what they did and the foresight uh, from the top down and the bottom up too, by the way. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Councillor Reed, you're next. Councillor Reed. Uh, thank you. And I... Uh, when I read this report, I, I was just kind of astounded, although I had known some of it beforehand, having it all in one place here and looking at all of the things that uh, have been done by the city and by the region in order to help our businesses is, is really worthwhile reading. And I would encourage anyone who is uh, tuning in to today's meeting to 
uh, read that report and see what has been done in order to help our businesses. I know in working with the Hester BIA that they certainly have appreciated all the assistance that they have received uh, from the economic development committees. And uh, it's, it's just been uh, very, very well received by our business community. Is, and so I want to also say my thank yous to uh, all of you for what you do. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Councillor Wolf, you're next. Councillor Wolf. Uh, thank you through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, again, I'd like to echo some of the thanks. Uh, when you look at that plan, it's so extensive and uh, it really um, seems to reach all aspects of business. Uh, but in conjunction with patios, have we looked uh, more into uh, closing um, um, Main Street, Lower Main, so that those patios can vault, so the patios can be even bigger than they are now? So that's, I guess, a question to staff. Um, through the mayor, that's something that we, we are looking at. We've had, been having the discussions with the BIA. Um, I can tell you that not all businesses are in favor of the lower Main Street closure. So that's something that we'll be you know, further talking to the BIA about and uh, seeing where their board would like to go. But uh, you know, rest assured that if they do make that decision or if we, we look at perhaps Water Street lot parking or parking lot two, um, that could be another option that I, I know Hardy's group um, in engineering and that has already started to look at these sorts of things. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there any uh, further questions or comments from council? And seeing none, if I may, I really also wanted to add my um, congratulations to staff and also my uh, deep gratitude for where we've ended up as a city. I know that the city of Cambridge was uh, quick on the mark to bring forward suggestions on, on how we were going to uh, support an economic response plan here in Cambridge. Some of our programs were uh, adopted early by, by Cambridge or created. And I know that um, certainly other municipalities and jurisdictions have followed some of the lead that Cambridge has put forward. And I'm really proud of that. And I also know that uh, the programs uh, from the economic development um, area have certainly served business as well. It's certainly easy to remember just one website, and I think I've memorized it, or it's tattooed on my forehead, one or the other, and that's investcambridge.ca. And it was easy for me in a lot of communications over the last three months to actually say to uh, people that were asking how we were supporting business to actually use a one website. And you've been able to bring in all of the different programs in other uh, levels of government, uh, such as the federal and provincial governments as well, and put it in a one-stop shop for businesses to access. Certainly, it has been very helpful. I also wanted to give a shout out to the communications department who have really tracked what's going on here, have promoted and continue to promote all of these programs on uh, all of our social media sites. As I said, I, I go to bed dreaming of them at night sometimes and making sure that I can remember those to promote them and uh, everything that I'm trying to do. I also know that there was a tremendous amount of uh, collaboration, not just with area municipalities, but our upper levels of government in order to try and clarify some of the rules around patios. Uh, these were details such as, is the six feet between table edge to table edge or chair back to chair back. I mean, incredibly detailed things that uh, in just really almost a blink of an eye, we've been able to, uh, to, to try and move forward and help our businesses to address. And I have to say that on uh, the first night that patios were open Friday night, I made sure that I managed to get my whole family out to a patio and enjoyed it. So make sure that uh, you dress for the weather and go out and support it. But I did want to end just with, uh, it's made it an easy partnership uh, when we're trying to advocate for um, what we need for other levels of government in order to make sure that we have what we need in a, in a business sense here. So thank you again for, uh, for what you've done there. And I see that Councillor Liggett has joined us. Councillor Liggett, are you there? I am, can you hear me? 
Yes, we can. Welcome. Okay, I'm driving. Okay, drive safely. <laughs> I will. Yes, I know you will. All right, if I don't see any other further questions or comments for staff, I'll ask the clerk to call for the vote. Madam Clerk. Okay, Councillor Liggett, just, um, just as you've joined us here, I'm going to have um, the mover for this motion read it again so that you know exactly what you're voting on. Okay, thank you. And that's Councillor Wolf. Oh, sorry, Council man. Councillor Mann. Yeah, he's ready to go. Go ahead, Councillor Mann. Thank you, Madam Chair. It was moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Reed that report 20-146 CRE Cambridge Economic Response Plan be received and that report 20-146 be referred to the Cambridge Economic Development Advisory Committee for information. Okay. With no further questions or comments from council, I will now call for the clerk to call for the vote. Madam Clerk. Councillor Adshade. Councillor Adshade. Other way, you're now muted. There you go. Uh, Councillor Adge. Sorry, in favor. Yeah. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Meta. In favor. Councillor Liggett. In favor. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. In favor. And that carries. Okay, thank you very much. Now we'll move forward to our next item, which is item number 13. And that is regarding the 74 Queen Street East property acquisition. Oh, Councillor Devine, you have the motion. Will you put it on the floor? Thank you. Yes, I do. Uh, moved by myself, uh, seconded by Councillor Reed. The council authorized the purchase of the property municipally known as 74 Queen Street East and legally described as LT53PL802 Cambridge, save and accept PT1PL58R185.92 City of Cambridge, the property in brackets. In accordance with the terms and conditions set out in the agreement of purchase and sale, the agreement in brackets, having a purchase price of $1.2 million plus applicable taxes. So that's one comma two zero zero comma zero 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 and that a capital project be established for the property acquisition and funded from the core area transformation reserve fund and further that the mayor and clerk be authorized to execute all documentation required to implement and give F effect to the adopted recommendations set out in the subject the report subject to the satisfaction of the city solicitor I'd like to speak on that, please. Yes, go ahead. I fully support the motion. This has been an iconic building on Queen Street in the village of Hasper for well over 100 years. Um, it was uh, the original federal government building, the post office, and it was sold a number of years ago, purchased, and uh, currently the Fashion History Museum is in it. But what is really amazing here is the Hesper reunion in 2016. The clock on the building had not worked for many, many, many years. The community did a fundraiser to repair the clock. And they raised thousands upon thousands of dollars. And the clock is now operation functional. Uh, many of us, uh, there's a couple on this call right now would walk down that street if you want to know what time it was, you just looked up. Okay. The, this building, the purchase of this building will be revenue neutral. We're looking at the figures, it's revenue neutral. It's absolutely amazing. It's a great investment for the city and it's a great investment for, for the Hesper Corps. This money, just so anybody that's watching, please don't think your taxes are going up 
because this money is coming out of the core areas transformation reserve fund and that's what it was meant for to uh, establish items like this in the core area of, of our city to improve things for the community and, and generally make it better so i i i can't say enough i think this is a a wonderful acquisition on behalf of the city of cambridge smart move we never will lose a penny on that thank you thank you councillor divine and i'll move forward to uh see if anybody has questions for staff and we've got a couple of speakers uh councillor reed next councillor reed Thank you, uh, through you. Uh, well, it bears repeating. Uh, I know uh, Councillor Devine spoke very eloquently about this, but I think that to speak again about how important this particular building is. It's historically significant building. It's right in the core area of uh, Hesper Village. Uh, when you come down Queen Street, you can see it at the end. And, uh, it, and uh, I know that it is well loved by the people who live in Hespler. This is exactly what the core area um, fund, transformational fund is meant to do, is, is to provide that kind of uh, building uh, that's significant to the community and that will assist uh, the uh, businesses within the area because of it being there. Um, we know that the Fashion History Museum brings people into the village uh, quite frequently. It, I guess with COVID-19, it's been more difficult because they can't do the bus tours that they normally do. But we'll get back to that eventually. And I know that it has been a boon to uh, the Hesper Village to have the Fashion History Museum there. And this just adds uh, further to uh, the significance of having this particular building belonging to the city. So I'm, I'm totally in favor of this and I hope that everyone else will vote for it as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Reed. Councillor Adshade. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. And I too am in full support of this motion. As Councillor Reed, Councillor Devine mentioned, uh, I believe this is what the core uh, area transformation fund is all about uh, in a core area getting a historic and significant building. The Hasler Court, I think it's a great idea. And it ensures the continued existence of the Fashion History Museum. And from, from the report, from reading the report, I think the buildings, other than a few minor repairs, is in really good shape. So that's great. And it will also bring in revenue of $43,000 to the city. So I'm full support. I think this is a great, great example of what the core area transmission fund is all about. Thank you very much. Councillor Mann's next on my list. Councillor Mann. Thank you, Madam Chair. I too am in favor of uh, the purchase of this building. And I think uh, as Councillor Devine has said, it's important for uh, the community to know that this is not coming off the tax bill, but this is money that has been put aside from the development fund. But uh, the old post office is, uh, it's an iconic building and we know that it's important to maintain our heritage, to know where we came from. And uh, for those who were raised in, in Hespler or grew up there, uh, we know that uh, that was the building that watched over the community. And you knew when you were going home, if you were in breach of your curfew or not, because you drove by that location. And uh, you better come up with a good excuse if you, if you were in breach. And even in my policing career, it was, it was important for us because that was one of the, the meeting locations that we had. And I think it's so important to keep these historical buildings as, as a treasure from the past, but also to identify where, we're, where we've been and where we're going. And uh, I think it's a great investment. It's important for the core. It's important for the community and I support the motion thoroughly. Thank you. Councillor Wolf is next. Councillor Wolf. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, uh, I too support this motion. It maintains heritage and culture, and it's a good investment. And uh, I think uh, it's a wise uh, move for the city. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Count, uh, Councillor Leggett, would you like to speak to this? I know it's difficult at the moment if you're driving. Would you like to speak to this? Uh, no, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, seeing uh, no further speakers, I did want to uh, add the comment that the core area transformation fund uh, was certainly started in in looking at uh, using some of the development charges that were in a particular fund in a way that does help us to purchase strategic properties in our downtown core areas for some transformation. And this certainly fits the bill. And I'm very uh, pleased to support this motion as well. I think with uh, Fashion History Museum as a, as a willing partner in that as we move ahead with plans for the building will uh, certainly be important. And again, I wanted to point out that the tourism industry and the tourism sector in the province of Ontario is one of the largest sectors that contribute to Ontario's economy. And we're really um, uh, fortunate in our city that we have so many opportunities in order to really uh, attract visitors and keep visitors not only to our city and our region but certainly to our downtown cores and this really does fit uh, fit all of that so I'm tremendously happy to support this motion uh, today I think that Cambridge will certainly benefit from the building and also for its, its uh, likely intended use so that's that's all I have to say, and we're seeing no further votes or sorry uh, requests to speak. I will ask the clerk to call for the vote, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Councillor Achade. In favor. Councillor Devine. Okay. Councillor Meta. Aye. Councillor Liggett. In favor. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. In favor. And that carries. Well, thank you very much. And that's unanimous. All right, we'll move forward then to um, our confirmatory bylaw. Just let me get the right area here. Yep, we're moving ahead now to our confirmatory bylaw. Uh, Councillor Wolf, you have the motion. Would you please read it in its entirety? Uh, confirmatory bylaw uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Ameta. Uh, bylaw of the City of Cambridge to confirm the proceedings of the Council of the Corporation of the City of Cambridge at its meeting held on the 16th day of June 2020, passed and enacted the 16th day of June. 2020. Thank you very much. So I'll ask our clerk to call for the vote. Madam Clerk. Councillor Adshade. In favor. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Mehta. Aye. Councillor Liggett. In favor. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor? Mayor McGarry? Aye. And that carries. Thank you very much. Uh, now we're ready for the close of meeting. And just before we do that, I just really wanted to note that is our CFO's birthday today. So Cheryl Ayers, on behalf of all of us, many of whom are chuckling away, yeah, you were found out. I wanna actually wish 39. you, yes, a very happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Mayor McGarry and everybody. I'm sure you can tell I'm blushing right now. <laughs> You want us Thank to you. sing? No, that's oh okay. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> we we could. The community but... probably doesn't want us to sing either. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know, especially since you're in our headsets. But anyway, the wish is the same. Happy birthday! Thank so now we're much. ready. Thank you. We're ready now for the close of meeting. I think, um, Councillor Wolf, you have the motion for our close of meeting. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, uh, I move that we close this meeting at 5.54 p.m. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Atchett. Thank you, and we're ready to call for the vote. We won't sing it, but you go ahead. Councillor Atchett. In favor. Councillor Devine. In favor, happy birthday, show. Councillor Meta. In favor. Councillor Leggett. In favor. 
Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. In favor. And that carries. Well, thank you very much, uh, everybody. The meeting is now adjourned. Make sure that you uh, uh, look after each other, stay physically distanced, wear a mask when you're out, wash your hands often, and most importantly, again, please look after each other. Thanks for joining us. Bye, thanks. Bye. Bye.